I am uh, from the University of Barcelona, and uh, uh, Francesca Anitin and Katie Green are presenting with me this uh, archive project and uh, some of the results we are archiving. But of course, there are a lot of people involved in this project. I will later tell you a little bit more about it. Basically, we will make a an overview of the project, we will speak about the objectives that we uh, want to arrive and we will speak a little bit about what we think are the real users' needs right now. Uh, we will also speak about the results in means of what we have done with catalogs, our reference database, and what we are doing with the appearance recognition and shape recognition. And we will also introduce you to the figure of our associates, that's the people that are collaborating with Archive. So, Every day, archaeologists from around the world are working to discover and tell stories around objects from the past, investing considerable time, effort, and funding to identify and characterize individual finds. It's known that around the 20 and 90 percent of the time and energy that archaeologists are spent in, in the classification of excavation finds. And it is also known that around the 80 and 90 percent of the finds are always pottery shirts. From the Neolithic, pottery was used for a lot of utilitarian purposes. In addition to this, pottery is indestructible. It breaks but does not disappear like perishable goods. Consequently, pottery shirts are the index fossil for archaeologists being a fundamental importance for the comprehension and dating of archaeological context and for understanding the dynamics of production, trade flows, and social interactions. The four, pottery is for the archaeologists an extraordinary window open on the past. Today, the characterization and classification of ceramics is carried out manually through the expertise of specialists and the use of analog catalogs held in archives and libraries. Unfortunately, it's, it is a very time-consuming activity since it's heavily dependent on human inspection and interpretation, both for academic researchers and professional archaeologists. Catalogues are also many times fragmented and incoherent, so consultation is a long and fatiguing also when it's available a well-furnished library. So, typological classification of pottery is mainly divided into two different steps. First, we analyze the shirt. For the identification of the ceramic class, the specialists look at the surface treatment, the decoration and the fabric. Then comes time for the identification of the form type. For this case, we need to look at the ceramic class paper catalogs for the specific form, analysis the section of the pot shirt and its profile, and make a comparison with the published vessels. It means going through hundreds of pages and drawings. The goal of archive is to optimize and economize this process, making knowledge accessible wherever archaeologists are working. We want to revolutionize the archaeological practice, introducing a modern com computer aid approach, but we want to keep as much as possible unchanged the overall methodology to ensure easy adaptation and impact in the archaeological domain. This means archive does, does not want to change current archaeological methodology, but the approach to study pot shirts. And but it wants also to help archaeologists in their daily work using the same methodological approach, partially automating it. So archive, uh, maybe you have uh, hear about us in uh, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter because we are really active and we have also a very nice website. It's funded by European Unions, Unions Horizon 2020 uh, Research and Innovation Program and aims to create a new system for the automatic and recognition of archaeological pottery from excavations around the world. It started at June 2016 and we will end on May 2019. This project involves more than 35 researchers, computer scientists, designers, and video makers from nine universities, public research centers, and private companies from different countries. Archive will support the classification and interpretation work of archaeologists, and we want it to be uh, functional also in field work, post excavation, and also in laboratory uh, um, situations and in museums. Uh, with this innovative app uh, designed for tablets and smartphones. The aim to change the global practice of archaeology is uh, one of our objectives. 
thanks to the latest automatic image recognition technologies. So how does it work? Mm, you have to imagine an archaeologist at the field that finds a pottery shirt. Then the archaeologist will take the fragment, will photograph it, and their characteristics will be sent to a comparative collection, with uh, an, uh, which will activate the automatic object recognition system, resulting in a response with all relevant information linked, an ultimate store within a database that allows each new discovery to be shared online. In order to prove an optimal find product for all our potential users, that's bad testbed cases, cases are going on. The testbed cases are necessary for verifying and consolidating our vision over the required system functionalities and for performing a solid assessment of the design and tool according to real archaeological requirements. Consequently, we decided to select real archaeological investigations covering both protitious heritage sites and development excavations and surveys. Rather than small test cases specifically planned for the purpose of the project, the rationale is to perform the assessment in real world conditions and not following a controlled lab experiment style in order to identify some typical interaction to scenario according to the potential use. That's why uh, we are collaborating with different uh, archives, like here in Barcelona, different museums, and also with uh, small enterprises around uh, Spain and Italy and with many people that are collaborating with us. So, oh, I forgot to pass this one, okay, <laughs> sorry. So, uh, what we have done in this three years project, of course, was not uh, possible to include all the pottery that exists in the archaeological record. Uh, we, something that we needed to do is to choose which pottery was going to be inside archive. Consequently, uh, the catalogs that we needed to choose in order to train the system uh, were directly linked to the types of pots that the pottery that we were choosing to work uh, during these three years. So, uh, finally, after a long discussion, we decided that amphora types uh, were uh, a good option. Uh, we are talking about amphora. Uh, uh, Roman amphorae that comes from the late third century until the seventh century AD, and terra sigillata. And then, uh, we are speaking about terra sigillata italica, hispanica, and south Gallish. In this case, we are not taking into account African. And in this way, we are going to be able to have in one hand a very big fragment so that you can find when the amphora uh, are breaking down. Uh, but also we are going to test uh, this uh, system with uh, fine tableware such as terra sigillata. On the other hand, uh, we decided also to include majolica pottery uh, and we are taking into account uh, Barcelona majolica, Valencia majolica and also Montelupo. This choice permits to create a first consistent and helpful data pool for archaeologists. The choice of these classes started from the opportunity to evaluate different types of ceramic shards. And you will see that, of course, we're also choosing, maybe some of you think we are going directly to choose the most easy ones, because, of course, for Terra Sigilata and Amphora, there is a much, uh, there is a really uh, clear catalogs, some of them are really well structured. But um, in this case, I must say that uh, we found that the Rasigila Hispanica is not that well structured. There are a lot of people doing different things, and it has been really hard to find all the information and put it down in the database. So we are almost created a new catalog. In the case of the Rasigila Italica, Conspectus is the most following, almost the only followed catalog. So it was really easy. We were really happy to have a really a structured catalog. Uh, in our first step, of course, uh, our ICT colleagues, the first thing they did for us was to implement tools to digitize these catalogs. Uh, and in the case of Conspectus, was working really good because, as I said, it was really well structured. And this uh, digitalization process uh, allowed us to populate the database. In many cases, uh, it was uh, very easy to do it in an automatic way, but uh, as I said, because not all the catalogs are as well structured as conspectus, we also needed to have some uh, tools for manual uh, text digitation. 
So uh, the drawings that come out in the catalogs are really important for us because uh, uh, they allow us to create 3D models that these help us to have a really uh, complete database because uh, you can search for the different types and you will also uh, be able to visualize these uh, nice 3D models. Uh, as you, I don't know if you can able to see, but uh, uh, the extraction of the drawings, that you can see that there are different color lines. Each color is uh, given some information, like the red one will be the, in, the inside part of the shirt, the green one will be the outside. So uh, in the extraction of the drawings, we are keeping information that is relevant for the pot share and that will be really necessary in the shape recognition process. So what we are, when we are speaking about what is our database, we, it is composed in two entities. One thing is the reference database and the other thing is the result database. The reference database contains a number of digital and digitized catalogs, as we said, and they will be able to, uh, and get, this is the core of our system, and at the end of the project cycle will form a, co a coherent static, a static resource. The result database is extended to form a dynamic user-driving dataset for incorporation based on field and laboratory investigative and reporting workflows. The results database is extended to facilitate the capture of user-generated text and images in the field or laboratory. These are then run through the application which is using the reference database and can generate a diagnostic of its shared. This individual diagnostic fit into a larger result data set which record the classes and types for each assemblage. So the, if uh, this is the aspect of our database, as you see, you have some text for each type, you have some images, sometimes you, we can also provide some film section images, uh, the drawings, the 3D models, we have also these nice, nice mappings so where you can see where the type was uh, uh, manufactured and I th uh, the, the visualization of it is really uh, friendly and, and really complete. Uh, we have to say that in, we are also <coughs> able to have multilingual vocabularies that allow uh, a linguistic ma mapping and in this way, uh, you know, in different recurring traditions may not only use different words, but different levels of granularity, and quite often not very much between very specific terms used across countries. So the mapping to AET neutral terms allow us to wait and searches outside of direct stream matching. So, uh, so how it works, that's what everybody is asking us, okay? First of all, uh, we have uh, two different things that we have to explain. So one is uh, related to the image recognition and the other one is related to the shape appearance. So, and the first step, what our aim was to work with appearance-based recognition, not only for uh, decoration, but also with stamps. By the moment, we decided to leave the stamp uh, Based recognition apart, we are working uh, mainly with the okay with the uh, with the decoration. Uh, now, and if you have been understand, you have been able to see how it's working for the uh, Montalupo uh, decoration recognition, and it's some uh, uh, images of how the app looks like right now. And as you see, you will, you will be able to take a photo of the pot shirt and the system will give you different answers up to five. And you will be able to click uh, to see and compare the photo catalog in order to see if you are okay with the answer and you will need to validate it. So the system is not directly classifying you the pottery. You at the end need some skills in order to validate which is the result that you think is the correct one. So, um, in the shape-based recognition, as uh, explained, uh, all the di digital catalog uh, was needed in order to extract all the uh, profiles of all the different uh, typologies. Uh, the, te the system was trained with syn synthetic dat data and also with uh, a um, huge uh, database uh, with uh, of different photos that we've done all these years. The, the app will work uh, in the following way. Uh, you will take the photo of the, of the shirt in a correct orientation and with a scale. Um, 
uh, reference and with your finger you will draw the uh, profile in the photo. This uh, profile will be, uh, uh, will be the one that will be analyzed by the system and will give you the different uh, possible uh, answers. So uh, we assume that archaeologists uh, will use the app to take pictures, pictures, and they will uh, not edit the known attributes, classify and use a matching tool provided by archive, and finally add further information if it's appropriate. Mm, using the archive front and web application, the user will be able to access to all his her data because every user will have a personal uh, space where all the classification will be uh, stored. And it will be almost uh, helping you to uh, write your final report. We have to say that Archivist participates in the Open Research Data Pilot. Uh, the data created will be preserved in, and disseminated online and made uh, freely available for use and reuse. At the end of the project, all data produced by the uh, archive uh, and a subset of the data from the results database will be available within the archaeological data service digital archive. Uh, we have to say that uh, all the information of the catalog that we we've been digital. Uh, uh, digitalists uh, uh, are not going. Uh, some of them have some copyright issues, and now we are working really hard in order to have agreement with all the editors. And uh, of course, all the data coming from ADS will be open. Uh, and, wh and while we are trying to have all these agreements, if uh, we were not, if we finally we are not able to be in agreement with uh, some editors probably uh, you will be able to have the recognition system, but all the archaeological information behind you will need uh, to pay it or, or will not be able to, the system will not be able to show it. And finally, we, we during this year, we created the associated figure. Uh, a lot of people have been interested in the project and wanted to collaborate with us. It has been a really nice network that we built because people were sending us photos to generate all this huge data set that we needed to train the system. And hopefully we, what our wish is that archive will be alive next year when the project ends. And everybody would like to carry on and to create more catalogs and make archive bigger because we really think this is the future. So if you have any questions, I'm afraid I will leave running you know, <laughs> to the wedding I have right now. And my uh, colleagues, uh, Francisca and Katie, will be here for, to answer all of your questions. And in fact, I think, I don't know if I write, Francisca, you brought the, some shares, maybe, finally. So maybe you could uh, <coughs> see. What we can do in this way, the Yeah, you could uh, check the app. Uh, I don't know if yeah. all of you have been already in our stand. We have a lot of people coming around asking and mm, testing the app. And um, I hope I was not that long <laughs> and messy. <laughs> Thank you.